All right, good afternoon, guys, and welcome to the Tuesday Afternoon Health Kitchen. My name's Paul Corliss, and I'm a healthy lifestyle advisor over at Your Live Wire. So today, I want to welcome into the Kitchen Talks is former professional rugby league player and superstar, State of Mind ambassador, uh, Mr. Danny Scullthorpe. Welcome, Danny. Yes, Paul, thanks for having me. I've been no, in the no, kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I just say we're in two different kitchens here. Danny's in his kitchen, I'm in, I'm in my kitchen. So, uh, so what we've come to talk to today is what we've been made aware of is people's well-being and the mental fitness during the lockdown period. And we mentioned this a couple of weeks ago on a kitchen talks and some ways to look after your mental health. But Danny's a, a big advocate and he's an ambassador for State of Mind. So, do you want to tell us a little bit about State of Mind, Danny? Yeah, sure, Paul. Uh, yeah, State of Mind was formed after the death of uh, not only a teammate, but also one of my best friends in Terry Nixon. Fortunately, Terry got banned from the sport uh, and couldn't handle it. You know, he, he lost his job. But the thing that he lost more than anything was his identity, and we struggled after that. And uh, unfortunately, took his own life in 2010. And, and he set up... Uh, the state of mind was formed after that. You know, three guys from the NHS uh, sat around the table and decided to form state of mind. See if anything different was happening in uh, any similar situation for players who were struggling. And you know, we set off in, in rugby league, we did the Super League, we did the chair, we did the players, we did the championship and local community clubs. But now we're we're out and about every single day. We do a lot of work in blue light services, a lot of prisons and a lot of construction sites, a lot of real out-of-sale type businesses where many particular think they can't speak about how they're feeling. Um, you know, that, that is the problem with with uh, with, with life. You know, people see that stigma regarding mental health and it stops them from talking and that's what we need to change. Absolutely, yeah. And generally, as we know, there's, a, there's a quite a big element of anxiety at the moment, obviously around this virus. People worried about work and finances and support, and obviously, we obviously with some really good ways to look after your mental health is obviously making sure you're doing your exercise. And we've, we've also obviously Boris has, has lifted the ban. You can meet someone in the park once you keep your social distancing. So I think that engagement and social interaction is is, is it plays a big part in people's mental health. It definitely is, mate. You know, isolation is a big cause of. Uh... Of mentally ill health. So now you can go and meet someone on the park and, and exercise was probably when I was struggling and after being forced to a time it was probably my big antidepressant. You know, I couldn't run for nearly six years but the boxing and that helped me massively. But at the minute now I just kept the dog or go on the bike with my son, take the take the dog out with the family. Just go down the canal, it's absolutely beautiful, uh beautiful scenic or the flowers are out, the trees are blooming, the, 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 the calmness of the water, it's just, just amazing for your mental health. You know, we'll do 10, 15 kilometres every single day with the dog and come back and you just feel miles better for it. It, it, it is a massive antidepressant, it really is. Absolutely, yeah, and obviously that's what sounds very mindful as well, and I'll stay to my uh, ambassador for doing mindfulness as well, and some really good apps out there as well. I know we we like to limit screen time with people on social media around, obviously, a lot of people spending a lot of time uh, during this period, probably boredom as well. So you spend a lot of time scrolling through Twitter, Facebook, all these social medias. But there's some really good apps out there like Headspace and some really good NHS wellbeing apps as well for, for people to, to download as well. Yeah. Obviously, from we we'll, hopefully we'll be doing some more state of mind in the community so it's really it'd be good to everyone to look out for and coming to listen to one of the stories uh, but there's some really good websites the council of happy okay sad uh, and that's a really good warrington public health website so if you are struggling with your mental health uh it's it's well that's a really good website to access and there's some really good services if people are struggling with the mental health danny what do you think is the best thing for them to do um. First of all, speak to someone about it. You know, keeping keeping your issues bottled up is just snowballing uh, that that problem. You've got to be able to open up. You know, you know when I was struggling with the biggest thing I did. Speak to family, friends, doctors, uh, and, and help. 
you know, I met our counsellor and I used to see him for about, I've seen him for about six months. You know, I used to see him quite often. I was very lucky that I could see him straight away because he was through the NFL and rugby league and it helped me massively. And it just, it just gave me different ideas on the way I was thinking. I couldn't put it when I was injured and I couldn't support my family and I was really struggling with depression. I felt like I was worthless. But, mm. you know, people just said to me, listen, you might be stuck on the couch, you might be stuck in your spine, but you're still there, still there for your kids. Why don't when you see that peel up and say it, chop some carrots up, you can do that on your couch. It just gave me that thought of, yeah, yeah, I can to do something. I'm, I'm not, you know, stuck on this couch, but I can do I can do little bits and it, and it mm. helps me. You know, you can, you can, like I said, speak to your doctor, the hub of hope where there's, Wherever you live, you type your area in and all the health services around your area will go. But I think that, you know, people want more, more, more than a counsellor, more than a family member, it's just a friend. You know, everyone's got a close friend that can speak to. Sometimes we just don't, you know, we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. And sometimes just being there for someone who's struggling, just giving them your ear is enough. You don't have to give them all the answers. You've just got to be there. You just listen. Listen non non judgmentally. Don't try and put yourself in their shoes. You know, everyone's problems are different and their little problems for you might have been massive for them. You know, so don't underestimate the problems that they're going through. Absolutely, yeah. And I like what you said about doing the small little goals and thinking goal setting and we we do this with a lot of health and well being work, just maybe getting it out in the morning, making breakfast or even a smaller goal, we're getting out of bed and brushing your teeth. These are these are little tiny small goals and, and obviously we can start setting some long-term goals and you mentioned about speaking to people as well and we know that the talking matters team in Warrington is the cognitive behavioral therapy the counseling service you do a lot of anxiety sessions they do one-to-one they're still operational at the moment so if people do want to speak to someone or they don't feel like they can speak to a friend you can always access the, the service and it's still operational at the moment so you can have some telephone assessments uh, and then hopefully when things get a bit more back to normal, you can uh, go in and have some face-to-face CBT therapy, or someone to talk to. And they do lots of courses as well, what's, what's really good as well. So other ways to look after your mental health. We mentioned about the exercise is really important. But that's a big part in mine and Danny's life. Uh, alcohol intake as well, because we, we do know people have been drinking a lot a little bit more as well, especially uh, I have as well. I'm a health- and I think I've been having, especially with the weather, sat in the garden. I think you're really careful because we do know alcohol, Dan, plays a big part in you, how you feel, especially the next day. 100%. Uh, you know, with it, especially with the weather, and then people are going out. Like when I go out for a 10, 15k walk and I come back and it comes out in the back garden, there's nothing more, there's nothing better than a pie outside. It's just nice and relaxing, but when one turns into three, then it turns into five and eight. You know, the next day, alcohol is a depressant. So you just got to be really careful on the amount of alcohol you're drinking. And, and we know on a Tuesday morning how much drinking is going on in the houses. Because when you hear the bin men turn up for the brown, you hear the bottles going in all over the place. You know that, you know, drinking is is becoming more and more. And, just got to be really careful that like, you're not drinking to, to mask your issues because you never do that. What like, happens? Start drinking to to make yourself feel better and to to, to numb these, these painful feelings that you're getting through isolation and maybe losing your job or being hurt. You wake up in the morning that problem's quite and you just got to be really careful that like, we're not using alcohol and drugs and, and stuff like that as a coping mechanism because they're always a bad one. Absolutely, yeah. And there's a really good service in Warrington called Pathways as well. So people are really struggling with the, the drinking habits. And uh, you, you can also you can also ask, come to the Lifestyles team or contact the, the Pathways yourself and, and go and access that service. Another really good, uh, I found working on my sleep habits as well, played a big role in how the way I felt. So we've also, in a couple of weeks' time, we've got Dr. Sarka Patel coming on to who's a sleep specialist doctor. He's going to give you some ways to, to looking after your sleep and the lot goes into room temperature. Social media plays a big part. Obviously, the, the 
activating your mind, the blue light, so reducing that, or caffeine intake, I notice that plays a big part as well. Also, looking after your diet as well. I know, I know, Danny, you put a lot of work into your diet as well, but we do know uh, when we work with patients, I work with people as they start to increase more fruits and vegetables and a better diet, they start to feel better. How does that make you feel, Danny? Yeah, 100%, Paul. Uh, you know, you do feel how you eat. You know, sometimes mm. I, speak, I go out with state of mind and I speak about uh, what, what about the food that we're eating. So if I do a talk, you know, I've done three talks in a day and then I warm and if I was to warm and have a cheese salad, you know, I might be starving after it, but I feel a lot better about myself than if I had three, you know, double whoppers at Burnley on the way home. If you do, you do, do eat, it, it does have a massive impact on your feeling. You know, at the minute, you know, with this lockdown, I can't go to the gym, I can't train as hard as I want to. So I, I have put about three four pounds on, which is quite a lot for me at the minute. So I, I'm always trying my best to try uh, train, train hard and, and eat healthy. But to put three four pounds would be really, really difficult. But I look at that and I think, well, putting three or four pounds on is not too bad when compared to some people who are who are dying through this COVID and stuff like that. And things could be a lot worse. And, and I put things into perspective. You know, like I said, if if if, if I'd have thought the coronavirus being a type one diabetic, I probably wouldn't be got a life worth about more than more than most people. And I've got to do that if I want to be here for this family. I want to see this is done. Yeah, absolutely. So the top tips from today, then, obviously, make sure you're talking and, and speak to a friend, or if you if you're feeling symptoms of anxiety and low mood and depression is go and see your GP and you can easily, if you don't feel like you can speak to your GP, they have really good ways now called the consult where you can, you can write down and send it to your GP or you can, you can speak to your friend or even take a friend with you to the, to the GP or come to lifestyles team as well. And we can look at your diet, your exercise, all sorts of things, ways to increase your sleep. And we do know all these, um, play a big role in improving your mental fitness. And there's a lot of services out there, so please go on the Happy OK Sad website because there's stuff like the offload program, there's anxiety groups, there's these support groups all over Warrington, so please access that. So thank you, Mr. Skullthorpe, for coming down today. Uh, and we'll be, hopefully next week, we'll be doing something around sleep to improve that. Uh, so look after yourself everybody guys uh, keep washing your hands keep your social distancing and we'll speak to you soon